everyone and welcome to the Beauty Matters with me, Len Hossen on ALB UK TV. Last week, as we've seen, we've been joined by Emma, Miss Universe Great Britain, to tell us more about her experience. And today we are joined by the director of Miss Universe Great Britain, Baula. Hello, Baula. Hello. Thanks for being with me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. Baula, I, intru I introduced you as National Director of uh, Miss Universe Great Britain. Can you tell me a little bit more about your role, your responsibilities? Well, I'm a, a very lucky lady in that I get to work with Miss Universe and I get to work with Miss World. So I'm the National Director of Miss Universe Great Britain and I'm also the, the Director of Miss Wales for Miss World. So I have a foot in both camps, which keeps me busy all year long, but in the best but. job there is, I think. <laughs> yeah. And how it's different now we are talking about Miss Universe and Miss World. Um, is there any like differences between them? There will be differences. Um, Miss Wales is uh, obviously for, for, for girls uh, living um, uh, in Wales or with Wel Welsh heritage and uh, has a younger age range mm. than Miss Universe. But with Miss Universe Great Britain, of course, we have the three countries in um, the Wales, England and Scotland and a slightly older age range um, up from 18 to 28. Mm. Um, and I think that Wales is pr it's predominantly white nation. Um, and so our, our contestants reflect that on the whole. And what's amazing about Miss Universe Great Britain is that uh, because of the multicultural um, uh, personality of the UK, mm. we get a far uh, more sort of diverse lineup, which is uh, particularly exciting to watch. And uh, now Miss Universe is, um, is soon. <laughs> Are you going with Emma to the final? <laughs> well, we, we've been very lucky to go to Miss Universe for the last few years. We've mm -hmm. been to Vegas, to Philippines, to Thailand, um, and uh, it's the best party. Mm. Tell your viewers that if you get the chance to go to Miss Universe, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like Eurovision Song Contest, but better looking. That's what I always think. Uh, so I really hope to go. But of course, Miss World is in London uh, this, year, this yeah. year. So we'll certainly be at that too. Uh, so we, uh, we could have double the celebration this year. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure that I might require your support over there. <laughs> Well, it's always great to support your girl. I mean, it's um, it's a pressured environment. Uh, mm. I always uh, trust my winners implicitly. They win for a reason because they're good, uh, trustworthy, positive, uh, pretty incredible young women. Yeah. And Emma's no exception. And of course, Emma's already been to Miss World. So she sort of knows the way it yeah. all works. And I have very high hopes for her because she's, um, you know, she's a, a great girl with... Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of strength. You told me a little bit about the qualities you look for in Miss Universe Great Britain, but can you tell me a little bit more? So uh, what you are looking for in the contestants? Well, broadly, I think it falls into sort of three areas, really. Mm. Um, it's a beauty pageant. So we're looking for girls who look good and, and yeah. we make no apology for beauty. It's OK to be beautiful. Yeah. Um, and so we're, we're looking for somebody who looks after themselves in that respect. There, there is not a particular height requirement mm. or dress re size requirement, but it's somebody who makes you know, positive and healthy life choices, I yeah. would say, and somebody who knows how to put the, the, their best self forward. So that's very important. Mm. The second thing that's really important is very high emotional intelligence. Mm. These girls represent the universe brand and more importantly, they represent their country and the young women within it. So it's uh, absolutely critical that they have the emotional intelligence to know how to carry that responsibility and go off in, let's say, into a competitive uh, environment in another part of the world and hold their head high and do us all proud. Um, and the third quality I would look mm. for is somebody with you know the get up and go the fire in their belly somebody with an absolute love of life and passion driven. and driven mm. uh, because a lot of people want to be her a lot of people want to represent their country on the Miss Universe stage so the girl who gets that uh, that opportunity people only watch the show which is last for like two hours they don't know the hard work required from the contestants and the director 
Well, you're you're absolutely right, and that that's that's a real that's a real shame. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that if you are a, a winner of one of the big pageant systems, you almost became that winner many years before set foot on a stage mm. it's your your character your personality your uh, love of life your determination your strength all these qualities that enable you to perform well uh, both on the stage and off and so ultimately the work starts long long before the pageant journey begins yeah I, it's just in my personal opinion I think like media coverage need to be um, let's say like hi on for beauty pageants. So maybe follow the girls before uh, before the final. That I think will give will give people chance to know them, to know what what's the causes they are um, trying to support. So uh, I think media coverage is just personal opinion will definitely help uh, beauty pageants. Well, um, we spoke last week with Emma about beauty pageants evolving over time. Uh, now, as a national director, you've been, you've been doing it for 10 years now. So how do you think it's changing over time? Well, I think what the girls have taught me over time is that they're very much a sisterhood. They're a, a group of very impressive young women who look out for each other and, and bond. And they... They have enabled me to create a path for them through pageantry that is more than perhaps the glamour you just see on, on the TV screens. Um, and as a result, we, we came up with our, our charitable organisation, which is called A Sisterhood, which helps women both in the UK and overseas. Mm. And it was born out of their, 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 their bond and what they actually call a sisterhood. Um, and it's been able to take the uh, sisterhood of pageantry out into the wider world to help women more generally. And so I think that there's a lot more to pageants than people see, mm. um, certainly here in the UK. And I would be, you know, there, there backing you up with your, you know, you know, your desire to see uh, the TV and the media world follow mm. the girls more more closely to see the depth of the the experiences they go through. In terms of um, charities they support. Um, are they like more flexible to choose what, what charities they want to support or is it the same charities Miss Universe, Great Britain organisation support? Well, with uh, Miss Universe, we are not told who to support, but mm. I think there is an expectation that you support good causes. Um, we are big feminists here at Miss Universe Great Britain, so we have felt uh, inclined to uh, veer towards the, the female cause. And it works very well. It's a great partnership because it's nice that empowered women on our stages uh, mm. who have opportunities in life are through those opportunities, able to perhaps help women who do not have those same um, those same advantages. And so we take um, our girls out to see girls who have um, maybe struggled, who are disadvantaged in some respects. And it's a great meeting of minds very often. For, for instance, uh, I think Emma told you that we will be visiting India yeah. uh, in a few weeks time. And we're going to support the girls who have survived acid attacks in uh, Delhi, in Agra and in Lucknow and we'll spend a week with them and it will be the best parties because it will just yeah. it will be beauty queens and acid attack survivors celebrating the fact that they are women and they're strong and they are claiming their own lives and leading them well. Yeah I'm sure it will be fabulous and it's a great experience as well for you and Emma to, um, to be involved in this, um, in this cause but from its name, Baula, it's called beauty pageants. Um, just the term beauty, how do you see it as a director? I think as a director, you, you're looking for girls that you warm towards you know towards mm. girls who you want to represent you know your country and your brand. And I you know, I'm a big supporter of these young women who have an opportunity through you know their 
the, the way they are, the way they look, their beauty and their, their positivity. So I'm all for the celebration of that. And I think it's okay to be beautiful and I think it's okay to celebrate beauty. And I think it's important that we encourage their positive life choices that they make, like eating healthy, working hard, going to the gym. And I like being in that environment. And I think what is really special is that everybody I think has the potential to be a, a beauty queen. Mm. Um, some years ago, a, 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 a surgeon told me um, that he worked towards something he calls the 80-20 rule. And it's the 80% you do yeah. with the 20% you've got. Okay. And so really it's about choosing to present yourself in a certain way. Mm. And some girls choose to do that and some girls don't. And it's fine, whatever your choice is. But for those who like the glamour, who like the makeup, who like the hair, mm. you know, let's go out there and celebrate femininity. And I really do think, you know, Feminism is not anti-feminine, you know, we are, it's okay to celebrate what women want, what women like and what women are. And I'm, I'm all for that. And, uh, you know, I think the girls are very, you know, very brave and adventurous to go out and do that on these big platforms such as Miss Universe. Uh, when I was watching Miss Universe Great Britain, I've never watched it live, I would ah, love okay. to, yeah. but when I was watching videos, I, I had the feeling that it is diverse, like mm. um, I didn't see a beauty queen similar to the year before, like uh, they are all beauty in their own way and they are different. Yeah. Um, so it, I can see the diversity in Miss Universe Great Britain. Is that something you choose to do or it just happen I, organically? I think the great thing about Miss Universe Great Britain is that if you um, said that it was uh, an international final of a pageant, people would believe you. And in fact, at the hotel, our host hotel this year, somebody said to uh, one of the contestants, so which international final is this? because you had so many different looks of beauty there. And that's, that's one of the great things about the UK mm. is that we, we do have that. And it's like, it's quite overwhelming to see all these incredible girls with different skin colors, different heights, different shapes, yeah, different amazing. ideas of fashion all come together. But the one thing they've got in common is that, that drive and positivity, even though they're, they're, they're built in, in different ways. So you really don't know what your winner's gonna look like. And that's, yeah, that's really exciting for me as a director. I think um, talking about winners, it means like every contestant which has the experience is a winner at the end. Especially that's um, like the friends you will get at the end, especially as um, Emma explained to us last, uh, last week. So it's the whole experience, you are winning out of it, even if it's at the end, it's only one, one queen. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. I, I've, I really hope everybody wins from the experience, otherwise I don't feel like I'm doing my job well. Yeah. And the way I see it, the whole journey is a, a journey of self-development, of personal development for the girls. And I always tell them at the start that there's only one crown here. So if that's what you want, you probably need to just go and buy one off eBay. But if you want a journey of self-discovery where you grow as a person, Miss Universe Great Britain is a, a good place for you. I think that's an important message because it might affect uh, their confidence or it might put pressure on them yeah. if, um, if, because if there is only one winner. The, <laughs> you're absolutely right. And, and we, we do things like confidence training and personal development days as part of the process because ultimately that growth is far more, um, far more useful, far more valuable to you in life than, than any sash. Uh, so the, the win is all round and ultimately girls like Ella, uh, like Emma, I'm sorry, I've got it. Okay, now carry on from girls um, like Emma. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've got your name wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So ultimately girls like Emma are representative of all the girls that they have competed with. And I think as Emma told you, they're all very, supportive of each other so they're pleased for the girl who wins to carry on you know carry on carrying the mantle on all their behalf uh, so paula as the um, miss universe great britain organization where do you get support from well we're very lucky to have a loyal group of sponsors here in the uk there we have a uh, our evening wear sponsor Jess boutique in the northwest who's like the fairy godmother for the winner uh, sorting out 
to all her her frocks to make sure she goes to the ball and yeah. that's always a very exciting time uh, for the winner to, to be able to choose and design her own dress wow, yeah. um, then we, we have uh, we have supporters from Dubai a diamond jewelry sponsors called Cara jewelers who are very generous towards the winner and so she'll be uh, dripping in diamonds for Miss Universe mm -hmm. and uh, we, we have skin care sponsors the Renover clinic in London so it, it's um, it's very nice and very, uh, you know, it, it just enables us to put on a professional show. And quite interestingly, a lot of the sponsors come from different parts of the world. They're not traditionally necessarily British. It's really interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and that, uh, that, that's great for us because it gives us that international feel to the competition as well. And for the ladies who they are watching us now and get excited about Miss Universe Great Britain, how they can get involved? Well, we start recruiting for Miss Universe Great Britain in uh, February mm -hmm. of 2020. The applications are uh, being taken now. So anybody who's interested in uh, applying, we'd be more than pleased to hear from them. So they just need to uh, visit our website, missuniversegb.co.uk and apply online. And uh, we shall be in touch with uh, those chosen for interview in the new year. So it's a journey of self-development over there. It's um, <laughs> personal development in great dresses and fabulous heels. So what more can a girl want? Great experience. Want? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paula, for being with me today. It was a pleasure having you. And for you, my lovely viewers, stay with us on ALB UK TV Beauty Matters with me, Len Hassan. <laughs>